Barakatah Yehowah, Barakatah Yehowah Shai, all praises and honor and glory be unto Yehowah, Baha Hashem Yehowah Shai, Baha Hashem Yehowah Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us the truth and who rule well. Peace, love, salutation, and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. 200 million missiles, 200 million nuclear missiles, won't that destroy the whole planet? They, the inspiration of this video comes from an individual who left a comment on the video that we did, all right, who goes by the handle Panama Perp, you know, which, um, you know, this person strikes me as, uh, you know, someone has stumbled across a video or just now finding out about the truth, you know, doesn't strike me as someone that's scoffing, you know, but um, pretty much, you know, me and the brother did a video the other day called, you know, t entitled, Explosion rock, explosions rock Lebanon, nuclear destruction on Babylon, which we know through the scriptures, through prophecy, that Babylon in certain scriptures isn't speaking about the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar, but it's speaking about the Babylon in regards to a future place that would be spiritually known as Babylon, I wish the world has found out, well, the world is going to find out that that place is America, you know, which uh, some nations actually call America Babylon, you know, and hey, we identify this place as Babylon. And um, hey, there's plenty of different scriptures that you can go to. Now, when it comes down to the whole planet Earth, all right, the, the whole planet Earth isn't going to be completely dissolved. All right, it's not going to be you know, destroyed to the point where it, it explodes and there's nothing remaining in this place but particles. All right. Hey, the scriptures say that the Lord created the earth to be inhabited. And it also says that the earth abided forever, which those are two scriptures that I'm going to bring out. All right. Because if the if the whole earth, the whole planet earth, you know, was destroyed, then that means that there will be no one here to inhabit this place, you know? There will be no inhabitants, which in the kingdom of heaven, hey, these other nations are going to be slaves. Now, we understand that these nations isn't going to be taken out of this place with the elect and going to the chariots. So they're going to be left upon this place while the destruction of certain places are going on, all right? Because the thermonuclear destruction is not going to happen, you know, it's 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 going to happen mainly in certain places and those places is where the third part of men live. The third part of men being Esau, Edom being the wicked and the main place that they're ruling through that's causing all of the turmoil in the world is Babylon. All right. So this place is going to be destroyed the whole land. Now, going over to the book of uh Ecclesiastes, all right, the first chapter in uh, verse four, and you should know what I'm getting. All right, it reads, one generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. You know, our power isn't going to destroy the whole earth, but you better believe that everyone that's left upon the earth is going to feel, all right, they're going to feel it. They're going to feel that devastation and destruction all right, that takes place upon America. All right. And upon certain places in Europe, as well as the land of Israel. All right. The scripture says that there's going to be the impact of these missiles hitting, which the scripture says 200 million. Now, if you believe in the scriptures, then you should believe that. All right. You should believe that a hey, revelations. The ninth chapter in verse uh, 16, which reads, it says, And the number of the army of the horse, horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. Now, when you calculate that, what does it add up to? It adds up unto 200 million, which reading on, it says, And thus I saw the, the horses in the vision. 
and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of Jason and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. So when have you ever seen a, a fire-breathing horse, all right, whose rider has a breastplate of, of, of fire and jacinth and brimstone? All right, what this is describing within a similitude, all right, because the prophet spoke in similitudes according to the book of uh, Hosea, the 12th chapter and the 10th verse. I have spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. All right, which a similitude is when you take something and you use it to explain something else. All right. Uh, simply to put it a metaphor. And uh, just to grab the definition. It says the quality of state of being similar to something. So the words that they had at that ancient time, they would use them to describe something that they were seeing in the future or something that's similar. So what John the Revelator saw was he, he saw nuclear warheads are right, entering back into the atmosphere and he saw the color of them changing. You know, the color that they changed when they were entering back into the atmosphere, once it heated up and got hot. And he also saw the devastation and destruction that they caused by these three with the third part of men killed by by fire, by the fire, by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. So who's the third part of man? The third part of man is Esau, Edom, the wicked, you know, so primarily in places where they abide. You know, mainly here in America, you know, because America is Babylon and America has caused all of these other nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So these nations having drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, they are upset at the whore. They're upset at Babylon. They're upset at America, at America. So they're going to use the nuclear missile, missiles that the Lord put it in their mind to design. And they're going to hurt. All right. They're going to shoot those over here. With the lack of regard for life, all right, their mind state that they're in is to destroy. And when they do that, all right, and the reasons where they're, sh where they're shot into, it's going to kill all right, a lot of people. And it being a lot of missiles, missiles being detonated, all right, it's going to cause the earth to reel to and fro on its axis. All right, it's going to cause the earth to shake. It's going to go back and forth. Now, these elites, knowing that this is getting ready to happen, all right, they're in the mind state of, of, of going into hiding. All right, all of these rich people that have money in the earth, all right, they knew eventually that this devastation was going to come. And that's the reason why this, they're within the spirit of building nuclear uh, bunkers, all right, turning nuclear silos into luxury, you know, uh, uh, living quarters to survive this nuclear holocaust that's coming upon the planet Earth. You know, but the most family father knew that this would happen. All right. So they're going into that pit, uh, into these pits and they're going to hide themselves all right, from the destruction that's coming upon the Earth. But they're going to come out of that, uh, out of those pits and go into slavery. <laughs> Isaiah 24 and 17, it says, Fear, uh, Salakia, it says, fear in the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh out of the pit, the midst of the pit, shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. Now, what does it mean the windows from on high are open? All right, it's speaking about the missiles entering back into the atmosphere. All right, because they're shot from the bow. The bow is the nuclear silo, and they go out into outer space, but then they enter back into the atmosphere, and that's the reason that they're able to travel so fast. That's the reason why the scriptures say within one hour. All right, and just imagine millions of them, all right, doing this upon the planet Earth. 
All right. It's it's going to be devastated. All right. And the tremors are going to be felt <laughs> all across the earth. All right. There's going to be a large quake. Isaiah 24, 19. It says the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is cleaned is off. The earth is moved exceedingly. All right. So the earth is going to move exceedingly at these missiles shaking, but it's not going to be enough to completely destroy the earth. It's just going to make it shake on its axis. All right. And just to look up the word for exceedingly, the word there is Mawat. And it says to totter, to shake. All right. To shake, to be overthrown, dislodged. All right. To sh uh, let fall. Although the earth isn't going to fall off its axis. All right. The devastation and destruction from these missiles are going to be felt, though. Verse 20 says the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. The transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. So who's going to fall and not rise again? That's the rich elite. Now, when it says the earth shall move to and fro like a drunkard. All right. Just imagine the drunk person. You know, being inflamed, you know, off the bottle and staggering all over the damn place, man. All right. That's how the earth is going to be. But the angels are going to have to hold the earth from exploding and from falling off of its axis. Psalms 107 and 27. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. So a drunken man staggers. All right. He stumbles all over the place. All right. That's that major earthquake. That the scripture speaks about, you know, when you go to scriptures like Revelation, the 11th chapter. All right. And um, the, the 12th verse. All right. Which uh, which this I'm the point is in the 13, but I'm going to start at 12. All right. Because this devastation is going to be uh, so strong upon America. All right. And uh, different places of the world that the elect are going to have to be taken away. All right. So that they won't get caught up in the destruction that's coming upon the earth. Revelation 11 and 12, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, all right, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in the cloud and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake and the 10th part of the city fell. And in the earthquake was slain men, 7,000, a complete number of men and the remnant were frightened and gave glory into the power of heaven. So the men that were frightened that gave glory was the elect that was delivered. And that were in the ships that escaped, all right, uh, that barely escaped, you know, as soon as the missiles were coming down and that destruction was getting ready to be caused, all right, they were being delivered and taken up so that that destruction would not come upon them. And 200 million missiles, all right, is enough to make the earth reel to and fro on its axis. All right. To cause a great quake, a great earthquake. Now, the 10th part of the city that was destroyed, that's speaking about America, because when America enters into martial law all right, or an emergency, you know, time power is given over to FEMA and in FEMA, America is broken down under FEMA. America is broken down under 10 zones all right, 10 regions all right, from from the East Coast to the West Coast is broken down into 10 regions. So that's what it means when it says a tenth part of the city all right, shall be destroyed. So that's what's going to happen. It's not going to be 200 million missiles hit and then the earth is, is completely destroyed and that no one is inhabiting the planet earth. Hey, the scripture says this as well when you go into the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter and the 18th verse. It says, for thus said Yahweh that created the heavens. All right. Power himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahweh and there is none else. All right. So the earth is created by Yahweh to be inhabited. And who was it created for? All right. It was created for us. All right. We're going to be the ones that are the next rulers upon the planet earth. But in order for that to happen, all right, this destruction has to come. All right, so that these nations can know who the true power is, who his son is, and who his people is. All right, we're going to be the, the rulers over the planet Earth. And our power is taking down all of the, the rulers that be right now. 
He's taking down Esau, Edom out of power. All right, these things that are going to happen upon the planet Earth are going to be talked about for ages. All right, and it's going to put the fear of Yahweh in the world again. All right, and the world is going to know his name. All right, this is the great day of our power, man. Second Ezra 6 and 57, And now, O Yahweh, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour, to devour us. You know, which these nations have ruled over the earth, the main nation that's ruling over right now is Esau Edom. And guess what? They are lords over us at this moment. And guess what they're doing? They're devouring us. And all of the other nations have been partakers in this, all right, and have had their hand in the, the devouring of the children of Israel. And the scripture says what? All that, that devour you offend, and all that devour you shall be devoured. So this is part of the devouring of the wicked, man, the thermonuclear destruction. All right, but we, thy people, whom thou hast, hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. And what's going to help release us from their hands? It's going to be the thermonuclear destruction, and it's going to also be the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, if the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? So the earth is created for our sakes. All right, we're going to be the rulers over the planet Earth. All right, so this place wasn't created in vain. It was created to be inhabited. And who's going to be the inhabitants of it? All right, who's going to who's going to rule over it? All right, we're going to be the rulers over it in the other nations, all right, which are going to inhabit this place as well. They're going to be our servants in the kingdom of heaven. So the earth is going to be completely destroyed, all right?